Let's talk about chapter 16 on strings. So this is kind of one of those chapters where I think it's good to just read through rather quickly just to kind of get an idea of some of the power with the string class and what you can do with it. Again, a lot of these examples I'm just going to kind of go through rather quickly. Just try to keep that the these pieces of nuggets of information in the back of your mind for later use just so you know some of the things that you can use with strings. So I think up to this point we've been using strings already so taking a look at you know how they're actually declared here so you can see we've got a string string stringle hello there as a thing that you do need to understand is that if you use this at sign then that'll literally interpret strings and so you can't use escape characters and so it's nice to have this at when you're for instance using file paths so you know there's going to be backslash within that file path so that's where you can use this at symbol to make sure that you use this string literally so strings are just basically character arrays but we're going to kind of go through and show some of the methods that you can do with strings so for instance if you want to get the length of a string you can do string dot length here we're just looping through each index in a string so you can see even though it's a string we can actually loop through each character in that string here and we can see it's part of the class system dot string so it's in the system namespace so again I'm just gonna go through some of these a little bit quickly just because they're not a lot of these aren't too interesting but just some good pieces of knowledge to know if you ever need to manipulate strings so here we've got four different strings declared outputting into the console and so we in C sharp you can use the double equal signs or there's also this equals method I always just use the double equal sign unless you have specific reason to use this equals come down here we can also have this compare to method which is actually going to give you a value based on whether you know it's less than or greater than these particular values All right, so this we've got an array of strings now. And so what we're doing is we're looping through this array. We're taking a look at each string. So this is how we pull out the first string. And we determine if it starts with ST, for instance. And then we're, so we're displaying all the ones that start with ST. And then here we're actually saying, hey, does it end with ED? So just again, if you're doing some sort of string manipulation, you can determine what's at the first or end of a string. Here we've got this almost full alphabet in a string here. We've got this char called search letters. And so we can see we're looking inside of our string and we're saying, hey, give us the index of this particular character. You can also see we can do index and we can do start and end kind of we're looking hey give us only search a part of the string here we can find the last index of we can also find the index of any finds the first occurrence of instance of any of these and then last index of so again just different ways you can search strings and find out which index you're matching characters at <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> so here we have a whole bunch of letters again <coughs> and what we're doing is we're just gonna pull out a substring now so we have letters dot substring and we see here we're just saying hey start at index 20 and give me all of the rest of the characters in this string now here we're saying okay give start at index 0 but only give me six characters <clears throat> so that's how you can pull out a substring you can just say hey give me from this point on or you can actually pull out a particular substring and this is a pretty heavily used string method <clears throat> here you can see we're just concatenating strings together using the plus sign or we can actually use this concat method that's all there is to that Here we can see we're trying to look for all lowercase e's and we're going to replace them with uppercase e's. And then this method here is one that I use all the time, especially with uh, validating user input. 
where I'm going to read in, you know, a username and query the database or an, some something ID or something where I want to store it and I always want to make sure it's stored the same way. So I want to make sure it's, you know, to uppercase kind of a thing. Another thing I'm doing with validation all the time is I'm trimming it to make sure that the user has not put spaces accidentally on their first name or last name, something to that nature. So there's the trim method. So the next concept we want to talk about is something called the string builder class. And so the thing about strings is that let's say I change a character in a string or manipulate that string in any way it's very inefficient if you're going to do this over and over again because every time you change even an individual character in a string it has to actually cal allocate a whole new string and then copy that new string in which is very inefficient now again if you're just manipulating one character one time you're not going to see any difference just do it with the string class however if you're going to have a huge string and you're gonna do a lot of manipulation and you care about speed then you're gonna to want to use the string builder class because you could think of the string builder class is just an array of characters that you can access and change really quickly and so in this case we're using the string builder class and there's multiple constructors that you can use and so you can kind of think of the string builder when I say like in a character array in that but it will grow dynamically for you and that's where I've passed in here let's say you know that you're never gonna go above 10 characters in your string and so we care about speed so you always want to allocate enough space up front and that's where you can do this capacity at 10 so now it's sort of set aside you know 10 items or characters you can store in here or you can also pass in the initial value of it and what's nice about the string builder is you can basically use it just kind of like a string as you can see we're doing here so now let's take a look at a, some more string buffer or string builder methods. So we've declared a, a string builder here, put hello, how are you? Here we're just outputting it here. We're getting the length of it and then we're getting the initial capacity of it so we can see what it was defaulted to, which I believe is the length that you pass in. Here we're actually going to increase the capacity again just to make sure that this is working as fast as possible. And then we're displaying it. And then we're setting, hey, set the length now to 10. So you're truncating it down, the characters that are in here. And then you're displaying it again. So now we've got all these different data types here, along with our string builder called buffer. And now what we're doing here is it's just showing you that you can append values of all different types. So you can see we're appending an object on here. We're appending a string and a character value. And so this is just way you can append on to your current string builder buffer here. And that's all that's doing there. Here's another word showing you that you know for all these different types, you can actually insert these values at any index you would like. You can also remove you know particular elements at a starting at an index and then how many elements you'd like to delete. So the last thing I want to talk about now is char methods. So we've got this structure called system.char and this is really nice for validation or testing individual characters. And so what you can see here is that inside char if you just if all you say is char dot it's going to come up with a whole bunch of handy little methods that you can use to validate individual characters. So for instance we can determine if it's a digit, a decimal digit. We can see if it's a letter we can see if it's a letter or digit, if it is lower, is upper, uh, is punctuation, is symbol. And so this is really helpful. You can either loop through a string, like let's say the person's entering in their name, and we want to validate it that they didn't put any symbols in their name. It doesn't seem like that would be valid. So you would loop through each character, and then for each character, you could make sure that it's not a symbol. You know, Or you could just say, hey, make sure each character is a letter and that would be a way to validate. So these are just some some helpful methods within this char structure.